Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the chance to speak here. Uh, this is my title. Well, uh, first I'll just introduce the Lagrangian cobordism. Uh, basically, that is like a two-dimensional surface that connect two uh, Lagrangian knots. When I say connecting, I mean it is cylindrical over these Lagrangian knots on the top and bottom, and then compact in the middle. And a natural question to ask is, in what condition can the cobordism exist? That means if you have two Lagrangian knots, then uh, is there a cobordism between them? So to answer this question, uh, we need to see, well, if there exists a cobordism, then what can we say about these Lagrangian knots? Uh, can we get any relation between the Lagrangian knots? Uh, then if the two given knots satisfy this relation, then it's fine. If they don't, then we can say, oh, there's no cobordism between them. So in this way, we can build up an obstruction to the existence of Lagrangian cobordism. Um, and then I'll introduce the augmentation category that is an invariant uh, of Lagrangian knot that has been recently introduced. Um, and the cobordism will actually give us a category map. We'll show some properties of this category map, and hopefully that will give us some relations between the Lagrangian knots. Okay. Um, so during this talk, I'll focus on R3 with a standard contact structure. And then uh, a cobordism happened in the uh, simplexation of the R3, which is, uh, which is one dimensional up with the two form as d of e to the power t alpha, where the alpha is the standard contact structure dz minus y dx. And then, as you can see on this picture, uh, the vertical direction is t, which is the t here. And then each horizontal slice is an R3. We have two Lagrangian knots in R3, but we want them to sit inside different level. So our lambda plus sitting inside the higher level, and lambda minus sitting inside the lower level. And then uh, a Lagrangian cobordism is such a two-dimensional surface that is cylindrical over R plus, uh, lambda plus on the top, and cylindrical over lambda minus on the bottom, uh, complex in the middle. And we also require it to be exact. So there is a function from the cobordism to R, such that the one form restrict on the cobordism equals df. And f is constant on the top and bottom. And then in this way, we can call this sigma as an exact Lagrangian cobordism from the bottom knot lambda minus to the top knot lambda plus. So there is an order here. OK, uh, so this is the Lagrangian cobordism. And then we'll have a brief uh, review about the chikanov elash dga Well, thanks to Chris about uh, this part of introduction. So I think I, I can skip these two slides. But uh, I still want to say something about here. So basically, you, uh, we have a Lagrangian knot, then there the Chukhanov DGA uh, has a vector space, and it's generated by the rib cores over the field here. Uh, so far, we use V2. But later on, it can be generalized to more uh, generalized field F. Uh, the, the differential here is defined by a count of a pseudo holomorphic disk with the boundary on R cross lambda, as you can see on this picture. So the boundary, ha uh, the disk have some punctures on the boundary. Mm, the disk is mapped to R cross R3, and the boundary will be mapped to R cross lambda, as you can see the blue part. And then the punctures will be mapped to stripe over rib cores. So this one is the positive puncture, and the other parts are negative punctures. And then the differential will just be uh, map the positive puncture to these predictive negative punctures with some coefficient. And the coefficient uh, is a count of holomorphic disk. We do not only count the number of the disk, we count the homology class of the disk boundary. Um, and yes, this is the Chukhanov and Lashberg DGA. And cobordism. Uh, from lambda minus to lambda plus actually gives us a DGA map. 
This map is also defined by a count of holomorphic disk, but now with boundary R, on R cross lambda anymore, it's a boundary on sigma. So uh, this is the sigma. As you can see, it's a similar picture. Uh, you have lambda plus here, lambda minus here, and the holomorphic disk is something here with boundary on sigma, and some positive strip here, negative strips here. And this is the DGA map. So this tells us um, the Chekhanov and Lashberg DGA act functorially on uh, cobordism. Since each Legendrian knot gives you a DGA, and each cobordism, which can be mapped as a map between Legendrian knots, gives you a map between DGAs. So, uh, yeah. And since this map is also defined on D2, but as I said, it can be generalized to more general field F, um, but we need some condition. The condition is your cobordism sigma uh, has a spin structure, um, then the the boundary knots have a reduced spin structure from the sigma. And then uh, the holomorphic disk can be defined with phi, and then everything will be fine. Okay. Mm, this is a special case for cobordism. When the negative side is empty, we got a filling for the, for the Lagrangian knot. So this feeling can be willed as a cobordism from amplitude to the knot. And this will give us the DGA map from the DGA on the top to the DGA of the amplitude, which is your field with zero differential. So uh, this is actually an uh, augmentation. Since the DGA map here means epsilon commute with the differential. So that's exactly how augmentation is defined according to Chris' talk. Okay, so uh, this is good. This tells us the correspondence between geometry and topology. Each exact Lagrangian filling will give us a great graded augmentation. Well, the other direction may not work. So there are augmentations that does not come from Lagrangian filling, um, but we can still use this. This isotopic filling gives us homotopic augmentations. So there's sometimes um, we can, well, it's not, it's not easy to uh, see whether two fillings are isotopic or not, but it, we can use this algebraic thing to check whether the two augmentations are homotopic or not. An example is given by Akhom, Kong, Honda, and Kama is saying, uh, the Lagrange, sorry, Lagrangian trophil have five fillings, which correspond to five augmentations. And then we can check the five augmentations are pairwise different, so the fillings are different. Um, and then this correspondence, uh, and then this correspondence also tells us um, instead of considering a Lagrangian knot with a Lagrangian filling, we can consider a knot with an augmentation. And that means we do not need to consider the four-dimensional thing, we only need to consider a three-dimensional stuff with some algebraic structure. Um, in 2009, Naller and Zeslow defined this derivative Foucault category for exact Lagrangian manifold, and then people guess, well, is there anything happen for the filling? If yes, uh, is there similar things on this augmentation side? The answer is yes. Uh, in 2014, Bang Zhu and Xiang Chun introduced an augmentation category. Mm, and later on in 2015, uh, in Rutherford, Zivak, Shandy, and Zeslow uh, introduced another one. Well, the, the previous one is not, is not unital, and the later one is unital. Uh, we'll focus on the later one here. Okay, so we start with a DGA of a Lagrangian knot. We start with a particular DGA here, and then the object of this category is augmentation of the DGA. And the, for two objects, there will be a morphism between them. 
this morphism is defined by some vector field over rib cores. Uh, this rib cores is like a is a rib cord of a two copy. So we start with a uh, with the Lagrangian knot lambda, and then we push it up toward positive z direction, and then perturb it use a MERS function. Then we get a two copy of the Lagrangian knot here. We label them from top to bottom as lambda one and lambda two. And the morphism here, well, this one and two will correspond to the other epsilon one, epsilon two here. Um, then the morphism is generated by the rib cores fl from the black one to the right one. Okay, so this is the morphism. Um, besides that, the A infinity category also requires A infinity operations. This is like a, a composition map. It maps n morphisms to one morphism. And what is this map? We can see an example, which is M1. That is from home plus to home plus. How does that define? It's also defined by a count of holomorphic disk. Um, so we consider the two copy of Lagrangian knot, lambda one union lambda two. And then consider the Lagrangian projection of this, means you project to x, y plane. And then y the holomorphic disk mm -hmm. will now look like some, some disk here. A as you can see here, it's like a bygone. And then each intersection here, A and B, means the mixed rib cores. So uh, in our case, that will be a rib cord from the black one to right one. Means A and B are elements in plus space. And the other punctures, P1, Q1, Q2 here, are real, uh, are uh, pure rib cores. So P1 is a pure rib cord of lambda 1, and Q1, Q2 are rib cords of lambda 2. And how does this map being defined? So you count all the holomorphic disks, and then you argument all the pure rib cores, means you map the P to epsilon one P and map Q to epsilon two Q. And then, now you only have two punctures, so the M1 just map the negative puncture to the positive puncture. It's this uh, map is similar to the differential of linearized contact cohomology, uh, the similar setting up. And for M2, instead of consider the two copy of lambda, we consider the three copy of lambda. And then instead of thinking the bigon, we have some, maybe say trigon or polygon with three sides, something like that. Um, these, these A infinity operations need to satisfy some relations. Uh, I will not write down other things. Well, the key thing from those relations is this one, M1 squared equal to zero. Well, M1 is a degree one map with square zero, so we can take cohomology respect to M1. So the cohomology here will be denoted as this one. And uh, this is not uh, something weird. This is related to the linearized contact homology, this one. So degree here, uh, cohomology K of home plus space, is isomorphic to degree one minus k of the linearized homology. Okay, so the uh, A infinity category defined here is an invariant for Lagrangian knot, or the five author um, proved this. Uh, the key property of this augmentation category differ from the other one is it is unital. By unital, I mean uh, for each object epsilon, there is a unit in the cohomology space. Um, well, roughly speaking, it just means for each object, you have an identity morphism, and that means unital. Okay, this unit property um, allow us to talk about two objects are equivalent or not. So the definition is here. If you have two objects, they're equivalent. If you can find a map from two to one and one to two, such that when you compose alpha with the beta, you get an identity map here. And when you compose beta with the alpha, you get an identity map here. And all the things happened on the cohomology level. That means equivalence. 
and we got a good relation, which is saying two augmentations are homotopic as DGA maps, if and only if they are equivalent as objects in the category. That means we are not defining something weird. We are just translate the original concept using our language. And uh, just to point out, well, for some, for a not that the DGA only have positive, uh, uh, gener positive degree generators, then any two augmentations are different, both as DGA maps and as equivalence relation in the augmentation category. Okay, so now we can go back to our cobordism. Well, as you can see here, if we have an augmentation of the bottom, which means a DGA map from the DGA here to the DGA here, the cobordism gave us a DGA map from top to bottom. Composed with the map here, we got a DGA map from the top to the DGA of amplitude, which is an augmentation of the top. So you can see here, the cobordism gave us a map from the augmentation on the bottom to augmentation on the top. And as we can see from the definition of A operations, they are highly dependent on the DGA. So it's not, def it's not hard to believe that uh, the DGA map here will actually give us an augmentation category map here. Okay. Um, what I proved here is saying this ca augmentation category map is injective on the level of equivalence class of the object. What's that mean? That means if we have two augmentations on the bottom, that will induce two augmentations on the top. If the top two are equivalents, then the bottom two are equivalents. That means injection. Yeah. And something we can say from this result is the first one is uh, the number of equivalence class of the augmentation on the bottom, smaller or equal than number of uh, equivalence class of the augmentation on the top. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, but, but roughly speaking, that just means the bottom Lagrangian now have less augmentations than the top one. Um, yeah, that just means that. Another thing we can say from the result is about ruling polynomial. We need to combine uh, this part. These four people introduced another way to count the augmentation. It's called the homotopy cardiality. And we can show that the, car the homotopy cardiality of the bottom is also smaller or equal than the one on the top. And this invariant can be computed using a uh, ruling polynomial. And so we have the following result. It's basically saying the ruling polynomial on the bottom is smaller or equal than the ruling polynomial on the top, in the sense that when you plug in these numbers, it's smaller than. So these numbers, Q here, uh, is correspond to the finite field FQ here. So for any finite field FQ, when you plug in these numbers, the ruling polynomial on the bottom should be smaller or equal than the ruling polynomial on the top. Okay, so this is good. Since for small crossing Lagrangian knots, we already know their ruling polynomials. So if you're given two, you just check the table and see what, what's, what are the uh, ruling polynomials, and then plug in the numbers and see do they satisfy the relations. An example here is the mirror of 946. So uh, we know there is a cobordism from N naught to this knot because, well, you can see, you can do a pinch move here, then you can get the cobordism. Um, but there is not a cobordism from this knot to N naught because the ruling polynomial here is two and the ruling polynomial for N naught is one. So there are only one possible direction for the cobordism to exist. Uh, this result showing that the concordance relation is not symmetric means if you have a cobordism from A to B, there may not be a cobordism from B to A, even though topologically it's, it's, it should be, but uh, in Lagrangian setting it's not. This, had, this has been known from these two papers, but our result gave an um, easy explanation for this result. Uh, for the last couple minutes, uh, I'll talk about how, do I, how did I prove this. So basically, I consider two copies of the cobordism, means you start with a cobordism, and then you push it up to p toward positive z direction, and perturb use a merge function, exactly the same thing as the two copy of Lagrangian knot. And then we can get a two copy of Lagrangian cobordism, and then consider such a chain complex this chain complex is generated by the rib cores on the top 
and bottom, and the intersections of these two cobordisms. And those chain complex have, have trivial homology. So that will give us a long exact sequence involving the cohomology of HOM plus on the top and cohomology of the HOM plus on the bottom and the cohomology or relative cohomology of the, of the surface. By playing around this long exact sequence for a while, I can get the following result, which is saying the cohomology of HOM plus space on the top and bottom are almost the same, except degree one. So degree one, this one is this much more than that. Since the F here is a field, so we basically just count the dimension. And the dimension here is basically two times the genus of that surface. Well, in the language of uh, linear light contact homology, this means the LCH of the top knot and bottom knot are almost the same except degree zero. And on degree zero, uh, you know, if they are just knots and cobordism is connected, they basically, uh, degree zero, the dimension difference may be like 2G or something. So uh, this gives a strong relation between the two Legendre knots. Basically, for small crossing Legendre knots, we already know their LCH. So again, if, if you have two knot, you just check their FCH, uh, LCH and see whether they satisfy the relations here. Well, basically, this is a generalization of the following result, which is a conjecture from Seydo and partially proved by Akholm and approved by uh, Diari and then translated by these five persons, well, uh, which is saying if you have an augmentation epsilon that comes from a Lagrangian filling, then we have the following relation, say, the cohomology of HOM plus space here is isomorphic to the cohomology of that filling. Um, so basically, you know, this side is very simple. It's saying degree zero is F, degree one is F to some power, and then for other degree, there are zeros, right? And for here, if the two augmentations are the same and it comes from filling, this one also comes from filling, then, as you, then you can see the relation here holds. Um, our theorem is saying, well, first, uh, the, the augmentation may not come from filling, then this is true. Second, if the two augmentations are different, this is still true. So it's like generalization of the following theorem. Well, uh, the last step here, well, since we already know the isomorphism, um, basically we, we just showed that the category map F actually induced this isomorphism. And then we can prove the injectivity. Since equivalence relation basically only matter the, code the degree zero cohomology. Once we prove uh, their isomorphism, then it's not hard to prove the injectivity. Okay. And that's the end.